Good morning. Happy Father's Day to all fathers and fathers in the faith. Uh, it's a great privilege to be able to uh, share this service of worship with you. If you would like to uh, follow along in the order of service, uh, that is located um, in the sermon section of our website. We have a threefold focus, uh, focus today, uh, World Refugee Day, uh, Father's Day, and also uh, National Indigenous Peoples Day. And, but the primary focus of our liturgy today is National Indigenous P Peoples Day. Uh, due to the open wound that exists in our country because of the residential schools. Throughout our time today, we'll be making special use of resources from yesterday's National Indigenous Day of Prayer service. And uh, so I invite us all to, to enter into the worship today and, and, and uh, ask us to bow our heads in prayer as we begin. Let's pray. Our God of love, we come today with this... Uh, threefold focus, and we pray that this service would be all you would have it to be in each of our lives. We pray that um, you would draw us ever closer to you and unite us in your love and strengthen us to reach out with your love to all with whom we come in contact. And all these things we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Opening hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, and the words are on our screen. continues with a prayer honoring the seven directions. This is a seven directions prayer that was written by the Venerable Paul Snavy, uh, the Lakota Archdeacon of the Episcopal Diocese of South Dakota. The seven direction was written by our own canon Jenny Doctor. where the thunder brings the cleansing rain. Grandfather God, heal us and our relatives. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let us turn our hearts to the one when who comes to us from there and in call us to rest. Father God, 
restore our strength. Let us turn to our hearts to the east. The morning sun begins each day there. Grandfather God awakens us and helps us to walk with a renewed life. Let us turn our hearts to the south, where the warm winds come from to give us comfort and joy. Grandfather God, soothe our aching souls. Let us turn our hearts to the sky. Yes, from there our Creator sees all around us. Grandfather God, help us to trust you to lead us. Let us turn our hearts to the earth. From there, quiet wisdom comes to teach us. Grandmother God, hear us as we pray. Let us turn our hearts inward to ourselves to find strength to be and do those things Creator called us to do. Grandfather God, be with us on our journey to completeness. We continue in prayer with the Covenant Collect printed on our screens. And I invite us to say it together. Creator God, from you every family in heaven and earth takes its name. You have rooted and grounded us in your covenant love and empowered us by your spirit to speak the truth in love and to walk in your way towards justice and wholeness. Mercifully grant that your people, journeying together in partnership, may be strengthened and guided to help one another to grow into the full stature of Christ, who is our light and our life. Amen. And we join in saying together the collect of the day. O oh God, our defender, storms rage about us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear and preserve us all from unbelief. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And uh, I invite uh, all of our children now to uh, c uh, come and to listen to um, a story that was penned by uh, the Reverend Canon Ginny Doctor uh, entitled The Strawberry Story. Allie said, 
We hug you and say thank you. Shane nodded, yes. Auntie said, that's what we have to do, hug and say thank you to the Creator. Shane said, but how do we hug the Creator? Auntie said, we hug Creator with our hearts as we say thank you. They joined hands and said a little prayer of thanksgiving. Then they picked. They filled their little baskets and Auntie said, Okay, I think we have enough. Ellie said, What are we going to do with the berries? Auntie said, Well, we can make strawberry shortcake or pie. Maybe a strawberry sundae. Or we can make strawberry juice. Shane said, let's make all of them. Auntie said, let's wait until we get home to decide. When they got back to the house, Auntie noticed that their baskets were half full. She said, what happened to your berries? They both looked down at their baskets with red lips and strawberry juice on their faces. Auntie chuckled and said, Looks like you decided what to do with your berries. It was all good. Later, Auntie made strawberry sundaes for everyone. Allie said, can we go picking tomorrow? Auntie said, I think we should leave some berries for others to pick. But later on in the summer, there will be raspberries and blackberries. Those are just as good. But we will go and pick strawberry leaves to make tea for the winter. Shane said, why? Auntie said, the leaves have vitamin C, and vitamin C helps keep colds away. Alex said, the creator sure is smart, and sure gives us good things to take care of us. Auntie said, yes, the creator is good all the time. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 107. We will say the psalm responsively, breaking at the asterisk. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. And his mercy endures forever. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim that he redeemed them from the hand of the foe. He gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west from the north and from the south. Some went down to the sea in ships. They plied their trade in deep waters. They beheld the works of the Lord. And his wonders in the deep. Then he spoke, and a stormy wind arose. Which tossed the high waves of the sea. They mounted up to the heavens and fell back to the depths. Their hearts melted because of their peril. They reeled and staggered like drunkards and were at their wit's end. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he delivered them from their distress. He stilled the storm to a whisper and quieted the waves of the sea. Then were they glad because of the calm and he brought them to the harbor they were bound for. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and the wonders he does for his children. Let them exalt him in the congregation of the people and praise him in the council of the elders. Let us pray. O oh God, the divine, divine seeker, seeker, you are light to the lost, bread to the hungry, deliverance, deliverance to the captive, captive healing to the, to the sick, sick, eternal vision to the dying, and harbor to every soul in peril. Gather the wanderers from every corner of the world into the community of your mercy and grace, that we may eternally praise you for our salvation. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And uh, Freddie, uh, on video, will now lead us in the first reading. A reading from 
from 2 Corinthians. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For, he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance and afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger. By purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and get our true. As unknown, we yet are well known. As dying and see, we are alive. As punished, and yet not killed. As sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. As poor, yet making money rich. As having nothing, and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children. Open wide your hearts also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gradual hymn extols our Creator's praise. How great thou art. Thanks. 
be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. On that day when evening had come, Jesus said to his disciples, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him, took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this? that even the wind and the sea obey him. The Gospel of Christ. I speak to you in the name of the one true and living God, our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer. Amen. In today's gospel, Jesus says, let us go across to the other side. It was evening, and no doubt the disciples must have questioned the wisdom of Jesus' action. Surely he could see the, the darkening sky. Surely he could see the darkening skies and that a storm was brewing. And what was on the other side anyway? Mad kings, Gentiles, people possessed with legions of demons, anyone and everyone who doesn't like them, and everyone they don't like. One of my fondest memories as a father is reading or listening to the Harry Potter books with my daughters, Emily and Sarah. And if you're a Harry Potter fan, you will remember Bogarts. A Bogart is a shape-shifting creature that takes on the form of your worst fear. Ron's worst fear was giant spiders. Hermione's was having a professor tell her she failed. Harry Potter's Bogart was a Dementor. And so that's what's over there on the other side. Bogarts, things that take the shape of your worst fears, the people you don't like, the conversations you'd rather avoid, the places you really don't want to go. They're all over there on the other side. The others are over there. We need to remember that Mark is writing for a community grappling with how to include those who are different, those who have historically been enemies, those looked down upon as sinners, as outsiders, as dangerous. Mark's community is wrestling with questions like, if Gentiles come into this mostly Jewish community, do they have to be circumcised? Do we all have to follow the same dietary laws? How do we accept someone into this community if they don't read scripture the same way we do? How do we accept someone who looks different, someone who speaks another language, who doesn't fit our boxes of gender, race, or class? How do we live with these others in our midst, especially if they have a different understanding of how to do things? What if they are fearful and violent and want to do us harm? Mark's community is in the midst of a voyage into this dark, fearful, and uncharted territory. 
Sound familiar? It's a journey that is always chaotic. How do we live alongside the others in our community? Do we change them or do they change us? It's a crossing that is never easy, but we make it many, many times in our lives. Every crossing feels like sailing in the dark. With all the changes around us, we are sailing in the midst of a storm. How do we cope when the structures and institutions we've always relied on to support us can no longer be counted on? When so many of them are visibly shaking under the strain of so much change? What do we do when our life situation changes, when the wind shifts, the seas rage, and the resources, the money, the people, the time that we've come to rely on are no longer there? What do we do then? What do we do when the weapons of terror and hate are raised against our brothers and sisters? How often are we like the disciples and cry out, Teacher, don't you know that we are perishing? Jesus makes this sea crossing to the other side with the disciples twice in the Gospel of Mark. Significantly, both times are at night. It can always be dangerous to go out to sea but it's particularly so at night. Each time there is a storm. This time, Jesus goes with them and sleeps in the stern. The next time, he will make them get in the boats by themselves and go on without him. When they get in trouble, he will walk to them on the water in the midst of the storm. Like a good father, Jesus challenges the disciples to venture out into uncharted waters, to test themselves, to go beyond their norms. Like many fathers, he, he may at times appear indifferent and aloof. In today's gospel, while the storm rages, Jesus is in the stern, sleeping, taking a fatherly nap, so to speak, on a comfortable cushion. But Jesus' love, just like the love of a father, is such that he is always there in times of need, in times of danger. And he can be counted on depended on, relied upon. Now each time in these crossings recounted in Mark, Jesus gets a little more impatient with them for simply expecting that he will perform a divine act and relieve them of their fear. Mark seems to be telling us that we have to do some of the work that we are, have to learn how to respond faithfully in these situations rather than simply reacting out of fear. Today's gospel with its exhortation to cross to the other side is especially appropriate on the eve of the National Indigenous Day of Prayer. The discovery of 20, 215 unmarked graves of children at the Kamloops Residential School has reminded us yet again of the horrors and injustices of the residential school system. A system operated by the church on behalf of the federal government from the 1870s to 1996, when the last school finally closed its doors. Historical geographer David Lowenthal describes the past as a foreign country, as a strange and unfamiliar place, a place that many of us would rather not visit. But as much as we like 
to forget or avoid the past, we are obliged to go and visit. We cannot understand where we are now and where we would like to go in the future unless we first remember where it is from whence we have come. In order to come to terms with our past, we have to journey to the other side. And today in Canada, we have to journey to the other side and encounter our Indigenous brothers and sisters. We need to listen to their stories, to hear their pain and their pleas for justice to name and own our collective past and assume responsibility for our ignorance and indifference, for our looking the other way and forgetting or denying the past and its lasting legacies. It is only when we face these storms and cross over to the other side that genuine healing wholeness, and reconciliation is possible. Jesus assures us that when we dare to cross over to the other side, we will find the strength and inner calm that will allow us to endure and even grow through these storms. Through faith. Through the faith, the trust, that Christ is there and with us in the boat that Christ is with all who suffer, that Christ is the peace and the strength and the calm that we can draw on. We need to continually seek that inner calm, that courage, because Jesus will keep calling us, keep calling us to go to that other shore. What or who is on the other side for you? What, in Harry Potter language, are your Bogarts? We all have them. There are all kinds of other sides. For the young, growing up and becoming an adult is an other side. For those who are older, retirement is an other side. What will I do? Who will I be if I'm not working? The other side might be getting married or getting divorced, facing an operation or saying goodbye. For the many who are well off, poverty can be the other side. The lived experience of people of color is the other side for many Canadians. The lived experience of so many on the margins is the other side for many others. For many of us, the other side can be coming to terms with a past we'd rather forget. And in coming to terms with that past, making amends for the wrong, the harm, the pain that we have done. For all of us, the other side is ultimately death. We all have other sides, places that we don't want to go, but that's where Jesus invites us to go. That's where Jesus wants us to go. That's where Jesus is taking us, to the other side, into that foreign country, to that place we'd rather not go, that place where the others are. Jesus wants us to go not because it's our job to change the other. Jesus doesn't insist on a night voyage on a stormy sea to, to make an impact on the ones who live across on the other side. Jesus does it to change the ones making the voyage. He does it to change the disciples 
to change us. He does it so that we will experience a change in ourselves, so that we will discover that reservoir of hope, that endless supply of peace and courage, that grace that enables us to keep making these voyages. These voyages that enable us to open wide our hearts to any and all who seek Christ, to all who are marginalized, to, <clears throat> to all whose stories we need to hear in order for us to recognize and more fully participate in the spread of God's reign of justice and peace so that we might one day live together with all our brothers and sisters in unity. May it be so. Now we affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed on our screens. Let us confess our faith as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people today begin with a prayer of thanksgiving from the national service. Whenever we join together, we should give thanks. So let us join our hearts and minds together and think of all creation and the Creator's gifts. Loving Creator, we give our thanks. Let us think of our Mother, the earth upon whom we walk and who supports us and nurtures life in all its forms. We think of the minerals, the fungi, and the bacteria that give life to soil, bodies, and water systems. We pray we can learn to walk on earth with more respect of the Creator. We give our thanks. Let us think of the reasons why we are gathering, for this place in which we gather, and for all the animals and plants that call this place home. Let the Creator. We 
we give our thanks. Let us think of the whole human family whose livelihood and well-being depends on the well-being of the earth. We lift up the men, women, and children who are displaced from their homes. Loving Creator, we give our thanks. Let us turn our minds to the sacred waters of the world, the great oceans, aquifers, lakes, rivers, and streams, the life and spirit that lives in those waters and knows that you themselves to us to be our food. Loving Creator, we give our thanks. Let us now turn our thoughts to the plant life of the Creator's world, that which is below ground, the roots and vegetables, that which puts love just its head above the ground, the grasses, medicines, plants and bushes. All of the many kinds of good fruit the Creator has given us, and finally the great trees of the forest that we know of as the standing ones. Loving Creator, we give our thanks. Let us think of all our kindred animals, those that crawl, walk, swim, and fly. We give thanks for those that provide food for us, those that sustain cycles in their work and living, those that provide companionship and beauty. Loving Creator, we give our thanks. Let us think of the birds of the air, the feathered ones that are the messengers between us and the Creator. Loving Creator, we give our thanks. Let us think of the relationships that sustain life in this beloved community. We think of the three sisters, corn, beans, and squash, who nurture, guard, and sustain as they grow together. These relationships are gifts from the Creator and our sustenance. Loving Creator, we give our thanks. Let us think of Jesus, the peacemaker, your Creator's Son, who suffered and died for us so that we will have eternal life and know the true meaning of reconciliation. Loving Creator, we give our thanks. We continue with the, our prayers with a prayer remembering the children uh, this is from the National Service, and it is National Archbishop Mark MacDonald uh, who is leading us in this prayer. God of our ancestors, who holds the spirits of our grandmothers and grandfathers and the spirits of our grandchildren, Remembering the children, we now pledge ourselves to speak the truth and with our hearts and our souls to act upon the truth we have heard of the injustices lived, of the sufferings inflicted, of the tears cried, of the misguided intentions imposed, and of the power of prejudice and racism which were allowed to smother the sounds and laughter of the forgotten children. Here are cries of lament for what was allowed to happen and for what will never be. In speaking and hearing and acting upon the truth, may we as individuals and as a nation meet the hope of a new beginning. Great Creator God, who desires that all creation live in harmony and peace. Remembering the children, we dare to dream of a path of reconciliation, where apology from the heart leads to healing of the heart and the chance of restoring the circle, where justice walks with all, where respect leads to true partnership, where the power to change comes from each heart Hear our prayer of hope and guide this country of Canada on a new and different path. Amen. Brian will now lead us in further prayers. 
beginning with a litany for healing and restoration from the Diocese of Rupert's Land. We begin with a litany for healing and restoration. Holy Creator, and from all things in heaven and earth of their being, have mercy, have mercy on us. Risen Christ, through whom the whole creation is reconciled to God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. Life-giving Spirit, whose love and truth fills the world and searches the depths of our life, have, have mercy, mercy on us. Blessed Trinity, source of both unity and diversity, have, have mercy, mercy on us. From our failure to recognize and respect the revelation of your truth and love in the first peoples of this land, Savior, Savior forgive, forgive and heal us. us. From our participation in the systematic oppression of indigenous sovereignty, language, culture, and spirituality, Savior, Savior forgive, forgive and heal us. From our role in the Indian residential schools, is designed to eliminate the unique society wisdom and beauty of the indigenous peoples of this land. Savior, Savior forgive, forgive and heal us. us. From our complicit tolerance of the decimation of indigenous family structures, leaving children vulnerable to abuses of every kind. Savior, Savior forgive, forgive and heal us. us. From our continued acceptance of unjust legal, educational, health and social structures, that continue to oppress and destroy the lives of many indigenous people. Savior, forgive and heal us. O God, we pray for the gifts of your grace and your love which never gives up on us and is forever faithful. Inspire our minds with the vision of the reconciliation of your kingdom in this time and place. Hear us, us O Christ. Christ. Touch our eyes that we may see the sacredness in all creation. Hear, hear us, us, O Christ. Touch our ears that we may hear from every mouth of every people the hunger for hope and stories of repression. Hear, hear us, us, O Christ. Christ. Touch our lips that we may speak of the beauty of every tongue and dialect, proclaiming the wonderful works of God. Hear, hear us, us, O Christ. Touch our hearts that we may discern your mission in which you call us to be immersed, particularly in partnership with the first peoples of this land. Hear Earth, us, O Christ. Touch our minds that we may witness to your good news in our neighborhoods, communities, and all parts of the world. Hear Earth, us, O Christ. Touch our hand that we may forever shun violence and embrace the work you give us to do. Hear Earth, us, O Christ. Draw your church together, O Lord, into one great company of disciples, together following our Lord Jesus Christ into every walk of life, together serving you in your mission in the world, and together witnessing to your love on every continent and island of your creation. We ask this in the name of the risen Christ, in whom we are one. Amen. Amen. On this Father's Day, let us say a prayer for fathers. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we, we thank, thank you for our earthly, earthly fathers, those to whom you have entrusted the responsibility to provide loving protection of their families and guidance of their children. We thank you also for all fathers in the faith whose spiritual fatherhood is so vital to the well-being of your people. May our earthly fathers imitate the manly courage of Abraham, Jesse, Jesse and Joseph, and, and all the holy fathers of the past in providing wise counsel to the children who have given, given their to their care. care. And may our fathers in the faith be guided, guided by the examples, examples of Saints Peter, Peter and Paul, all the apostles, and their saintly successors. Give, give them valiant faith in the face of confusion and conflict. Hope in time of trouble and sorrow, and steadfast love for you, for their, their families, and for all your people throughout the world. Assist all fathers of families, all fathers in the faith, 
and all Christian men that through your grace they may steadily grow in their relationship of love with you and share your love in word and deed with all whose lives intersect with theirs. As you are our Heavenly Father, so love the world, sending your only Son to be our Saviour and Redeemer. We ask you to help all men to imitate his fatherly gentleness and the mercy of the those we are weak. His humility, perfect obedience to your will, and fearless witness to your truth. May their lives be examples to all of our Lord faithfulness to you. We ask your blessing on all those who presume you have entrusted to fatherhood. May your, your Holy Spirit, Spirit constantly inspire them with justice and mercy, wisdom and strength, fidelity and self-giving love. May they receive your grace abundantly in this earthly life, and may they look forward to eternal joy in your presence in the life to come. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord. Amen. We now have a word refugee day declare. God of the journey, we remember, remember that Mary and Joseph had to flee to Egypt, taking, taking Jesus to safety, leaving home behind. Remembering, we pray for sisters and brothers around your world who are forced to leave their homes. We pray for brothers and sisters who are driven from home by natural disasters. We pray for sisters and brothers who are driven, driven from unnatural acts of violence and persecution. We pray for brothers and sisters who are driven from home because of inadequate responses to natural events. We pray for those who leave their countries across borders. We pray for those who are internally displaced, finding new places to live within their own country. We pray for those who are exposed to freezing cold and to searing heat, those who lack food, water, shelter, and other necessities of life, those who are exploited, violated, and abused, and those who mourn the loss of place and all that brings. We give thanks for the strength, courage, and grace of our sisters and brothers who are refugees or internally displaced. We give, give thanks for the contributions they, they make in their new, their new places and for the ways in which they enrich our lives. Guide the leaders of the world to find freedom ways to respond, respond and to extend protection and provide safe haven, to care compassionately and respectfully for the needs of our sisters and brothers, to address the situations and circumstances that force people to leave their homes to do justice, justice and to seek peace. peace. Show, Show us ways that we can support our brothers and sisters as we encounter. Inspire us to engage in the efforts to create a world in which all have a safe place to call home. We pray in the name of the refugee, Jesus. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting us to this table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And we have received God's peace. We can now share that peace with one another. And wherever we may be, I invite us to greet one another with the peace of Christ. At this time, we're pausing to offer to the Lord our time, talents, and treasure remembering that the gifts that we have been given by our Creator are gifts to be shared. In our parish family, one way that we share our treasure is through the offerings that we give to St. Paul's. Uh, thank you sincerely to everybody who is continuing to give financially to St. Paul's to help us carry out the mission of sharing and spreading the good news of God's love and word and deed. We are now going to listen to the Offertory solo uh, ancestor song uh, sung by the Reverend Canon Debbie Royals from the National uh, Service. This is a, an opportunity for us to remember our, our fathers, our grandfathers, fathers in the faith uh, who have departed this earthly life. And uh, while we are listening to this, uh, our screen will show a slide that mentions ways that we can participate in the mission God has given us by sharing our support. My name is Debbie Royals from Pasquayaki from Tucson, Arizona. I greet you on this beautiful day in Arizona. Today I'm going to sing the ancestor song to, for you, and I ask you to join me as we remember our ancestors for generations past. gifts is printed on our screens. Eternal God, you have made our Savior Jesus Christ the head of all creation. Receive all we offer you this day and renew us in his risen life. In the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Our Eucharistic prayer today is Supplementary Eucharistic Prayer 2, which especially focuses 
on healing. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Eternal God, source of all being, we give you thanks and praise for your faithful love. You call us into friendship with you and one another to be your people in the world. When those we trust betray us, unfailingly you remain with us, when we injure others, you confront us in your love and call us to the paths of righteousness. You stand with the weak and those broken and alone whom you have always welcomed home, making the first last and the last first. Therefore, we raise our voices with angels and archangels, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, O Holy One. When Hagar was driven into the wilderness, you followed her and gave her hope. When Joseph was sold into bondage, you turned malice to your people's good. When you called Israel out of slavery, you brought them through the wilderness into the promised land. When your people were taken into exile, you wept with them by the river of Babylon and carried them home. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine. At the right time, you sent your anointed one to stand with the poor, the outcast, and the oppressed. Jesus touched lepers and the sick and healed them. He accepted water from a woman of Samaria and offered her the water of new life. Christ knew the desolation of the cross and opened the way for all humanity into the redemption of your reconciling love. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus at supper with his friends took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, gave it to them and said, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. loving and holy one. Recalling Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you these gifts, longing for the bread of tomorrow and the wine of the age to come. Therefore, we proclaim our hope. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Pour out your spirit on these gifts, that through them you may sustain us in our hunger for your peace. We hold before you all whose lives are marked by suffering, our sisters and brothers. When we are broken and cast aside, embrace us in your love. Restore us, O God, let your face shine. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, O source of all life, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We, being many, are one body, for we all share in the one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. At St. Paul's, we have the opportunity to partake of communion physically as well as spiritually. Consecrated wafers, each infused with drops of wine, can be picked up on Saturdays between 2 and 2.45, or by appointment from a table just inside the main entrance. They're in individual paper cups and covered with a sealed baggie to make them safe for everybody. We recommend that you hold on to the wafer and partake physically during communion time at this very moment in the service. The body of Christ, given for you. Um, the blood of Christ, shed for you. Amen. All of us, whether or not we're partaking physically of the bread and wine today, have the opportunity to feed on our Lord in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And so I invite us all to say the prayer for communion on our screens together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Now we say together the prayer after communion. Almighty God, guide and protect your people who share in this sacred mystery and keep us always in your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. We have uh, first a Navajo blessing, and then blessings in different languages. Church 
Navajo land. And I'm grateful to be here with you and to offer up this Navajo Beauty Way prayer. It's a ceremonial prayer. It's about harmony. And it's about coming together as one people. And it's about healing. Let us pray. In beauty may you walk. All day long may you walk. Through the returning seasons may you walk. On the trail marked with pollen may you walk. With grasshoppers about your feet may you walk. With dew about your feet may you walk. With beauty may you walk. With beauty before you may you walk. With beauty behind you may you walk. With beauty above you may you walk. With beauty below you may you walk. With beauty all around you may you walk. In old age, wandering on a trail of beauty, lively may you walk. In old age, wandering on a trail of beauty, living again may you walk. It is finished in beauty. It is finished in beauty. Kojon Hosli, Kojon Hosli, Kojon Hosli, Kojon Hosli. Everybody is invited to join our post-service virtual coffee time uh, via uh, Zoom. Uh, the slide on our screens shares how to do this, uh, how you can get the link that you need. It would be wonderful to share this time of fellowship together with you. And I just realized that this is unplugged somehow. That will be better. <laughs> and uh, also wanted to mention that uh, um, in addition to uh, this uh, uh, virtual coffee time, which happens at 11.30, uh, between 2 and 3 uh, today, uh, we are going to uh, once again have the uh, uh, church building open for uh, picking up the uh, Father's Day gifts that have been made. Um, Shannon and our Sunday School made these uh, wonderful uh, Father's Day gifts. Uh, uh, so far we've had uh, 13 that have been picked up, um, but uh, like I said, we'll have uh, between 2 and 3 today, once again, the opportunity to do that. Or you can call the office to make an appointment. Uh, I've already opened mine and I won't spoil the surprise, but I'll just uh, say that uh, uh, 
these gifts do involve chocolate. <laughs> and on behalf of all fathers, thank you, Shannon, and our Sunday school for putting these together for us. And our closing hymn is going to be Amazing Grace, but we're going to uh, have that introduced for us by Archbishop Mark uh, on video. I'm going to sing Amazing Grace in Ojibwe. It is a very uh, popular tune. Um, even the music is used quite often uh, with other lyrics that have the same, uh, same uh, meter. It is uh, found uh, used in so many First Nations communities. It's been uh, sung in so many different languages among First Nations communities. It's much loved. I even know of one church that sang it every service for four or five years. Uh, and then somebody finally said, well, maybe we should try something else. But it's still sung quite often. Uh, when we gather together, it's something that's uh, almost always sung at the Eucharist, at least, at least once, when we gather together for Sacred Circle and other meetings. So it's a much loved uh, tune with the words meaning an awful lot to First Nations people. Continue singing Amazing Grace. Go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. <laughs>